welcome everybody. Um, I want to welcome you to our third Ike Kaiaulu Talk Story, um, Nurturing Connective Spaces, uh, the series that we are doing uh, to talk about community engagement and higher education. And just by doing this and being here today, you guys are community engaging, which is like really, really cool because you don't have to look, lift a finger. Um, <laughs> we, we do this on the second Friday of every month. So mahalo, mahalo for joining us today um, and registering and all that. So I'm glad you found this topic today very interesting. Um, so today, um, I want to welcome <laughs> Tolua Samifua, who is from Lady Pacifica, and she is our featured community partner today. Um, I am Noi Tupo, I forgot to say that. Um, mm -hmm. I am the director, the program director for Ike Kaiaulu, and it is our community engagement program at Windward Community College. So I also am a Hawaiian Studies instructor, Hawaiian and Pacific Studies instructor um, as well. So I kind of wear several hats, but this really is our um, reach out into the community and talk story with our friends, which is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. um, Aloha Kalai, just came in the door, the door in quotes. <laughs> um, anyway, let's welcome Tolua. <laughs> And one of the things that we really want to focus in on is this idea of taking control of the narrative. Um, the narrative being ours, yours, and your students. If you're an instructor, if you're a student, yeah, your voice um, is what we're talking about today. And what's really cool is all of us are women. And so Lady Pacifica is a very appropriate um, <laughs> topic being that we're all ladies in the room. Um, <laughs> and the question, how can we in higher education speak to with our students or with each other um, and make sure that our voices are heard within the community and within higher education. So um, if you read the flyer in detail, there's a lot of information um, on that flyer that really kind of talks about the perspective of Lady Pacifica. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Tolua. I'm gonna to take away this gorgeous picture of you, by the way, uh, and then we'll talk story, the four of us. Sounds good. Or five of us, sorry, I can't count. Okay, so this is Tolua. Um, Hi everyone. <laughs> I can see um, so half of you, Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Tolua. <laughs> uh, so I think, you know, your topic was really, it really resonated, I mean, with what we do at Lady Pacifica, because we, the reason as far as founding Lady Pacifica was because we, what we felt that, especially me personally, I felt that we needed to um, share our stories, um, our, our, our way, really, um, you know, historically, stories of people who are not in the, in the, um, I guess in the majority or in the big publishing world don't get a chance often to really share their stories authentically and that was a big push for me. So um, a little background about Lady Pacifica was um, I, it's a mag, is she, uh, Lady Pacifica is a magazine and we started as a magazine not even thinking where it would go, it was just something that I really wanted to do. Um, something to tie in with sharing stories with a little bit of pop culture with magazines, right? Um, I loved magazines growing up, and I loved reading stories, you know, just general stuff. But I always felt like, why don't I see any Pacific Islander women in the magazines, on the covers? And these are, I'm talking about like mainstream kind, you know, like with, when you go to the grocery store, you see like People and Cosmo. And those are the, you know, for me, those are the magazines I'm talking about. We do, there are some niche publications out there, but I was like, why don't we see any people that look like me? really on those covers, anything that's really um, celebrating being Pacific Islander. And this is back in like when I was like a senior in, in college. So I was about like 22 years old and I wanted to do that at that time. But in at that time, uh, my mindset was like, I don't know how to do that. I have no clue how to get started on a magazine. 
<clears throat> and so I didn't do it. And um, now I work at the jail here in Honolulu. And uh, what I do is I interview in, uh, myself and my colleagues, we interview incoming defendants coming into jail. And that is a hard reality. It was a hard reality for me uh, to see that, that so many people coming into the jail really look like me, you know, were of Pacific Islander background. Um, and, but at the same time, even though we're in such a, a negative space, you know, the jail is not the most positive space, but even though they're, and, and especially when they're coming in, they're not happy, of course. They're either, um, you know, they're not happy to be there. Some of them are coming off of drugs. Um, some of them haven't eaten all day. So they're in a very bad mood and negative energy when they come in. And then to sit down in front of someone in front of a plexiglass is another, you know, it's just another, to me, another way of really disconnecting from the person sitting in front of you. And so that, and then, you know, I, I recognize, wow, there's a lot of Pacific Islanders coming in, you know, and, but being Pacific Islander myself, even though there's that glass in front of me, I think being Pacific Islander helped, um, you know, with that communication with that person across the glass. In the beginning, it's kind of awkward for some people because, you know, it's just like, oh, it's another Islander, you know, they're used to seeing maybe a Caucasian person, an Asian person, possibly but a Pacific Islander who they really feel like, oh, she really does look like me. I might know her somewhere. You know, that really, uh, in the beginning, it's kind of awkward, but then we, we talk story. I try to engage with them and show them and um, inform them about my role, why I'm there, and really just talk story with them at the same time while I'm doing my job. And in that 15 minutes I have with them, it's, an, it's really unbelievable the things you hear. And, um, just the, the stories within those answers that they give you, it really resonated with me. And uh, that's where the magazine idea really um, felt, I really felt I gotta do this now, no matter what. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, I'm sure that that was like totally, totally intense. I can Im just imagine a situation like that. Um, you know what I wanted to do is I wanted to share um, if it's okay, the, yeah. your, your website, and then mm -hmm. the poem that is on the website, is that taking you into a different place or is yeah. that okay? Is that okay? Yes. Okay, yes. Let's, let's do that. Um, because I think it's kind of like a, a it's an a audio, movie, right? it's an audio magazine. There you go. Yeah. So not only does Lady Pacifica have this really impressive, glossy magazine that looks like <laughs> Vogue, um, which is like an actual physical um, yeah. magazine. I, I remember yeah. when I first saw it, I was like, that's like a magazine, <laughs> not just like a little cardboard book yeah, that was like slapped right. together. It was actually a, a magazine. So let's look at their website really quick. That's so funny uh, because I just put the poem on last night. Like, we literally. That is funny. In the meantime, would you guys mind, look at me, I can't even find you guys now, um, <laughs> putting in the chat your um, name and maybe where you're from and if you are a teacher, what discipline um, and what hat you're wearing. This is the uh her page and i love the artwork that's up there i think it's yes. absolutely gorgeous um but i wanted to play this poem right here so i'm gonna press play and hopefully everybody can hear it can you I hear that noise myself in cities i travel to scanning faces you can and hear features mine? i see wide noses and flat faces bronze tones and any skin i think is she my mother's kin my father's village friend, do they see themselves in me when we cross paths? Or are we just passing through a city square, a rural park? Strangers through and through because I see no me's or crossing the street. I see no wide nosed, flat faced brethren with 
bronze tones and ink skin. I see no wavy haired moanas with oak trees for legs. I see no tocos, no lewas, no new way in families moving onto my block. I am diaspora breathing, Oceanian grieving, communities I am both a part of and far removed from. I am seething for belonging. I can only dream of wondering how an ocean as deep and as wide as the Pacific could fit inside a one bedroom apartment and not drown in feelings of being homesick for a home I've never been to and a journey that has left me both landlocked and seasick. I am diaspora grieving, an island built from concrete. There are no anchors here, no star maps or wave readers to guide the lost sailor home. There is only me. I'm landlocked Oceanian, trying to build bridges from the Big Apple to Hito de Vakeniwe, Lautoka Fiji, and Ha'ateo Tomatapu with nothing but poetry and wishful thinking that one day, by salt and tide, I'll meet myself and a stranger who will turn out to be my brethren. That's for breathing, Oceanian living, Manamoli. Wow. <laughs> so, landlocked Oceanian. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty amazing poem there. Um, does everybody know what diaspora is? No? Diaspora is actually in Greek, it means the scattering of seeds. Um, and basically that's what it is. Take mm -hmm. a bunch of one ethnicity and you scatter them. And right. they, they are no longer in their homeland and many times create smaller groups in those places that they land. Um, but sometimes they feel like um, this poet and very much um, disconnected. And I think that it's just, I mean, after you, you Tolua, speaking about those who come into the jail and sit in front of you, um, and you see them as Pacific Islanders and they see you as a Pacific Islander and they wonder, are, um, are we connected? I just saw so many parallels between that poem and what you just talked about. Um, and you wonder what their story is. So Lady hey. Pacifica is just a perfect uh, segue into what you, that poem shared with us. Thank you. And you know, so the, the website, um, I really wanted, it was really at first just a vessel to get s somehow help people get the magazine, but then um, it became a really a breathing ground of um, a way for us to communicate. And so the artwork you see in the background was graciously um, donated by Salote, who is from Niue, based in Australia, and she allowed us to use, to utilize her beautiful artwork to kind of add more breadth and depth to our website because before it was just real like you know generic um and then we just added the poetry um just last night literally like really last night <clears throat> and that is from sila joy and her poem is featured in our current issue thank you the thank you issue um in as far as the the poetry itself the words you can see it on paper but i I asked her if she didn't mind recording it for us so that we can include it on the website because I felt, you know, if you, so she's also on Instagram. That's how I found her. And she reads her poems, her poems live on Instagram as well. And I was just like, you know, we need a, we need a recording, at least something mm -hmm. we'll start there. Cause I'm still much a novice when it comes to technology, but I said, we need a recording of just hearing your voice, read your poetry. And that way, when people come to the website, it's even more in depth, you know, like there's so much more depth to that. So you have the artwork from a Pacifica woman in Nui, or who's Nuean, and then you have um, Sila, who is Tongan, Fijian, um, Nuean as well, and talking about her experience. So I felt like it just adds so much depth to Lady Pacifica. So so, and um, and then we started our blog space, which where we allow we we ask you know our our women and um, in our community who want to share something, who just want to talk on something that is on their heart um, and share it in in the form of a blog. And so we've we've opened that up in the last year. It's been an amazing turnout so far. Um, and and then we have our social media spaces. But yeah, Sila is wow. Yeah, she is amazing. And it so that's really taking control of the narrative, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that take taking control of the narrative, I think mm -hmm. is is it's maybe really maybe it's next semester's 
talk story theme. Yeah. Um, this semester, we're talking about nurturing connections because I think that mm -hmm. many times, well, throughout this pandemic, we have those connections have been disconnected and we're striving to connect. And mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was very, very important. How, how do you think that um, if you are a WCC student and the majority of this audience is WCC, they are WCC students, um, Jenny is an instructor of English um, and Maile Kalai and Ivalani are students. So uh, knowing that these are students at WCC and an instructor, I think it's important to think about, well, what are ways that perhaps WCC students and instructors might be able to reach out to Lady Pacifica? Is there anything that um, you can think would be helpful? I mean, there's so many avenues, right? There's writing, there's photography, there's websites. There, I mean, there's so many angles, uh, connections, making Pilina with the other people that can then connect. Um, yeah. 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 So I just thought I'd ask that question. Yeah. And we, so when we share the stories, we, um, sorry, I'm so sorry about that. When we share the stories, we try to include if the author or the, the person sharing the story is open to it, it is including like contact information because we want that Talanoa to continue. If someone's reading their story and it really, really feels something or is really moved by something and they want to continue that conversation, if our, if our storyteller or our author is, is open to it, you know, we want to have that avenue where they can reach out to them to share maybe what they got from their story or even ask questions. So there's a segment that we, which is kind of a new thing for us, we talked about sex and the topic of sex and what that means in so many different ways to people. And um, so we had people write in real stories. I mean, on from them, you know, these are stories from the readers, from the community that wanted to share their stories on the just subject of sex, whether it's taboo, whether it's something they've been wanting to share maybe, and they didn't have to share who they were if they didn't want to. But we had two, I think, two women share stories about their sexual abuse experience um, and then going through the therapy and the counseling that they did and now wanting to share that story and wanting to like be available for anyone who wanted to continue that conversation. So we had two women uh, who, who are willing to identify who they were in the stories that they shared and contact information because they wanted to be available for those who wanted to reach out to them to possibly talk maybe a little bit on that experience or about their story. And I think that right there is really taking control, like owning, you know, your story, owning your message and, um, and then being available to show everyone that they have that permission to do so, you know, and that they have the support really. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions they would like to ask before I ask my next question? <laughs> I do. I, I, I mean, it must have been one of Noe's earlier emails that sent us to Lady Pacifica because I've seen your website or maybe <laughs> I was looking for you and I didn't know. <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I'm not familiar with the magazine. What kind of, and I, I'm, uh, forgive me for being a little late. The magazine, oh. I know it's uh, geared toward women of the Pacific. Mm -hmm. Is it, is, is it, Fiction, storytelling, poetry, uh, nonfiction, genealogy. Like, is it everything? Is it everything? <laughs> it's kind of a little bit of everything, honestly. Yeah, so in the beginning, it's really nonfiction. These are real stories. So we would interview um, our subjects, our, our, um, our storytellers. And some of them, um, a lot of them wanted, so we'd interview them and then share their story, really. And then, um, so it's really, I would say it's more nonfiction. And then just... I would say this issue was the first issue that we, I'm trying to remember, did we feature any other poetry? I think this is the first issue, the thank you issue that's out right now. I think this is the first issue that we featured um, artwork, such as a poem, you know? I'm tr yeah, I'm really trying to think, I think this, this might be the first time. We did feature um, artists in our third issue, gosh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember, and I, I don't think we had any poems in there. It was more like um, some of the artists we highlighted were one was a photographer, one a singer, 
One was a, um, like an activist poet, but she didn't really share poetry. And then, uh, geez, gosh. I, and then one was, uh, sh one was a resident and artist at, an artist in resident at, residence at YWCA. Um, but we never have shared poetry as far as like what we did in this very recent issue with Sila Joy writing out that poem for us. That's the first time we've done that actually. So, but it is, I would say, it is definitely more nonfiction. We're sharing stories of women that are willing to allow us to interview them and share their story. Um, but this is the first time we've opened it up in that sense of um, sharing art, artwork, like as far as poems. And uh, what, we, what the idea was, I guess, was trying to highlight three emerging creatives in different disciplines. One is Salote, who did the artwork for our website. The, in the background image, one is Sila Joy, and the other is Afatasi, who is an Afronesian artist, and she shares her story about being Black in America as well as Samoan. So, and her tapestries that she uses, her textiles, which is a combination of both of her backgrounds, which is interesting, which is yeah. super amazing too. But wow. this is the first time, now that you mentioned it, this is the first time we featured like a poem in our magazine. So, yeah. It could be, it's growing. <laughs> I think it's a little bit of everything that, um, you know, and uh, it's because our, our last issue before this one was our fashion issue. And again, it was more sharing stories of fashion creatives, whether they are designers. Uh, we had the director of one of the bigger fashion shows in the Pacific. She was our cover girl. And we're kind of sharing her journey as far as being a director and the struggle she's been through. Um, so it is definitely more of a, Nonfiction, yes. <clears throat> Sorry, that's a long way around that question. <laughs> if you go to the website, you probably mm -hmm. can see a picture of a magazine. Right, so and our I, the digital download is free. So we are offering the digital version of it free um, because we want to stay true to the idea of sharing these stories, you know, without having to pay money for them. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the magazine itself, you know, because it's self-funded. I'm literally putting my money into it because I, I really love it and I care about it so that's the only reason we have to pay for the physical printed version of it but the digital you know we made I want free for everyone to share you know read learn about these amazing people in our in this issue um, but it's really so this issue is focused on really um, thanking our essential workers at this time um, so we, we highlighted eight women from across the Pacific that are um, going to work every day showing up and uh, in different disciplines. And then it's also a thank you love letter basically to our community that has really stuck by us in the last couple of years that we've been around. So yeah, but the mask was really, um, we usually feature women on the front cover, but given the, the current situation we're in, it was really difficult to get with people and take photos. But um, I really felt like the mask was such a huge statement symbol for this year. And so we decided, you know what? everyone will remember the mask for, forever and uh, no matter what happens going forward. And so we decided, you know what, that, that should be the cover for this year. Cause this is the only issue we, we, we are releasing this year as well. Yeah, no, I agree. It's a, definitely an iconic thing we will never yeah. remember and we will know what year it was just looking yeah, at the exactly. cover. <laughs> yeah, 2020. <laughs> Jenny, yeah. did that answer your question um, that you were asking? Yeah. See it. Yeah, and I just downloaded the magazine, so now I can like oh. see. So, are you like the main editor then? This is your magazine. You're the editor. Yes. You're the interviewer. Wow. Yep. Basically, uh, I have a small, very small team, uh, but this issue I really did on my own. The thank you issue, but I do have a team. I have a small team of writers. When and you know we try to open it up to everyone that's wanting to write you know and so that's one of the big advertisements in this issue is if you want to write you can i think people feel like they have to have some kind of resume or experience and of course we i guide them in the writing if if they need it but my biggest thing was like you don't have to like you can write if you want to write if there's someone you want to interview someone that you feel that is, has such a great story and you want to interview them and share their story shoot why not you know does anybody else have any questions? I do have a question. Um, so when you said you stopped um, pursuing your 
dream for Lady Pacifica, what inspired you to keep going even though you weren't sure, like you wanted to do it? Uh-huh. What kept you thinking like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this? Yeah, so so when I was like, when I was in college, that was my undergraduate many years ago, I was like 22 when I got the idea. Um, but at that time too, technology was so different. It isn't what it is now where you have access to so many things and there's YouTube and God for YouTube that shows you how to do things. Um, and then um, I was just in a different, I think at that time, I just didn't think I could do it. You know, I was younger and I didn't think I could do it. And then it's where I work now at the jail that really like, okay, I've got to figure it out. You know, um, I really have to, cause before I had, so back in college, I made even like a little mock cover. Like I even have it to this day. Like I drew it out with pencil and like I had these ideas and I kept it. I never threw it away. And I think that to me was something that was a sign that I, I couldn't let it go for some reason. It just wouldn't, I couldn't throw that away. So I have a little envelope with these ideas I had from 12, 12 years ago now that I wouldn't throw away. I just said, you know what, I'm just going to keep it because you never know. And then um, after about a year at working at OCCC, um, I've been there for five years now, but yeah, after just a year of working there and doing what I do, I was like, there's something that I want to do to help our community, inspire our community, and really share with them that there's amazing women in our community alone, not just Hawaii, but across the Pacific that are doing amazing things. And if I could, you know, really reach out to them and share their stories, I felt like this is one way that we could inspire our youth, especially to let them know they're not alone and they have role models in their own backyards, really, in their own communities that they could aspire to and look up to. Um, and so that's what really pushed the magazine. It, I, had, I really had no idea what I was doing. I still don't. I'm still kind of, I'm still it's been two years, but I still feel like I'm a baby in it. But it's, that's what really pushed me was I, there's already amazing women that I already knew of at the time. And I figured, you know what, I bet you there's even more out there. And so let's cast the net and see how many we can reach out to and how many women would be willing to participate in our little dream of sharing their stories and to inspire you know, youth like you to step up and do even a more amazing things in the future, you know, for our communities. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. I yeah. have another question. There's time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's time. Tons of time. Um, so I'm a, I'm a composition. I'm definitely an English instructor, but I'm a composition instructor. And um, so, like, well, English is the dirty word. <laughs> um, Sorry. And coming to Hawaii to become an English, an English instructor. Like I could never, and like being Howley outsider, I'm just like, oh my God, this looks a whole lot like missionary stuff. <laughs> but I, know, I, I know. found ways to try to make my job relevant and to make my student work relevant and meaningful and mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have students do a lot of writing about themselves in the beginning of like all of our English 100 classes, just to like how to ground them. Yes. And I have another activism class where they're encouraged to write about um, local change makers or people that are inspiring and um, that's cool and then I get to teach uh, lit classes too and I'm looking for places they can publish right now we've got our own school <laughs> newspaper Are you open to student work like if I could yes. so so stories of real life Pacific mm -hmm. women, like Mana Wahini, mm -hmm. like, did I even say that right? I'm still yeah. learning. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning so Wahine. much. Where we, we're um, looking to like, if they, even if, if they say they're interested in writing even like a blog, if they want to start with like, so my baby steps are like, if you want to start with a blog and you want to just kind of open up a conversation about something you're thinking about or something that's really on her, their minds, they can start with a blog and then if they want to, and then transition to the magazine, if they want to, if they want to, yeah, we're open to it. We're even open to like, if they want to share like artwork, if they have a poem or excuse me, there is something that they are an artist they want to highlight. We're definitely open to that. Please. That's amazing. That's even better. The youth I feel are so important. This is why we started Lady Pacifica, you know, 
Um, and so this is really for them to really like own and hopefully grow with it. And, and Lady Pacifica will survive even after I'm gone or whatever happens with, with me at this point, you know, that it'll continue for them really. So yes, please, I would be so interested and I wanna stay connected so we can do that. <clears throat> awesome. <laughs> I wanna I wanna do that too. Yes. Um, <laughs> I wanna send stuff. Um, yes. I noticed in uh on your website that there was a sentence that said, um, envision ten years ago also does events public um event public events, creative media. Can you talk a little bit about some of those events that ha Lady Pacifica has been associated with? I've been at them, but Yes. Tell everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we uh, try to have an annual brunch um, where we have speakers from the community come in and share their journeys about, um, you know, maybe they are running a business or they're instructors, you know, any discipline really, and want to share their journey into getting to where they are now. Because I think oh, so many of us see the end result, but don't really get to see or hear really much about the journey to get there. And that even for some of them, even though they've reached in our eyes, what looks like a successful position, they put, they're still struggling with something, you know, they're still struggling with that position or whatever it is. So every year we try to have a brunch event for our, uh, in our community to share and really celebrate our women. Um, and then last year we had, no, two years ago, we started the arts festival. Um, Actually, no, sorry, 2018, 2019, we had the brunch. And then in 2018, later in the year, we did our first arts festival at the Capitol, where we really celebrated Pacific Islander artists of all backgrounds. Uh, we had carvers, painters, um, uh, makeup artists, you know, come out. And then last year, we hosted the first Pacifica Festival at Honolulu Museum at Doris Duke Theater, where we had um, Pacific Islander groups come and perform in the theater and which was so graciously donated to us. We're very awesome. grateful. And then we had artists on the, um, on the, uh, the, out, the courtyard area share work, you know, and this was artists of all backgrounds, male, female, um, come and share their work. Because I think for a lot of Pacific Islanders, um, when we think of art, there are so many different ways you can identify artists. Um, but we have some amazing photographers, painters, you know, carvers. Um, and so uh, anytime we think of arts in Pacific, it's usually like performance art. That's how I think about it. And so we wanted to showcase some artists that, that are in our, in our communities here that have amazing artwork. So we had um, Anthony Watson, who is, um, who is Palauan and Black, and he does carvings. He does indigenous Palauan artwork. And that was amazing. We had Shaw with her different art, you know, she has her comics and she has her graphic art. And then we had a, a photographer that was her first showing ever. So I was really, really proud to bring her out of her shell and have her show her artwork. And then we had Salmo who did a live painting at, on the court, at the courtyard. And while everybody was just kind of like enjoying the artwork and watching him paint live, which was amazing. And then in the evening, we went and celebrated the performance side of it in the theater. And that was such a blessing for us because I had always imagined holding something like that here, but, um, and it came together beautifully with the help of Doris Duke Theater and Honolulu Museum sponsoring that space for us. Um, but, and then we've, but we've also participated in various um, community events as well. Uh, we try to be there as a presence to support our community partners, you know, so we're really, really grateful. We've only been in it around for two years, but the love and support from our community is overwhelming, you know. We wouldn't be where we are without them, you know, honestly. Awesome. <laughs> How about you, Miley? Do you have any questions? I wanted to ask um, the speaker exactly where she was born and raised. And then I also wanted to ask about the artwork behind her. I haven't looked up the magazine, but if that, the triangle represents, mm -hmm. you know, what that represents right. and then maybe the birds and, 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 and what, and that's it. Okay. And thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So I uh, was born in Yokosuka, Japan. My dad was in the U.S. military, he's in the Navy. Uh, so I, I was born and myself, my sister were born in Japan, but we came here to Hawaii when I was about two years old. Raised here basically my whole life. We grew up on the um, Navy base here in Honolulu. Um, and I went to, and that's, I basically lived here my whole life. But so that is another in, um, important part of my, I would say my identity is being a child of a U.S. military veteran. So it's, it's kind of like, a comp, it's a complicated re relationship. When I realized, growing up, I loved being a child of the military. I loved it. Um, I was very, I'm very patriotic and it's because of my background and my father's hard work and um, service to the country. But when I grew up and, you know, um, coming out of that, really, was really going to college and learning about the history of the U.S. in the Pacific was really hard for me to mm. really swallow and understand the, the role that the military has played in the U.S. Um, and then my father being a U.S. military veteran proud one as well and um and also the benefit our family got has received from his service in the military i know i wouldn't have had the education i have i wouldn't have the privilege that i have now had it not been for my father um serving in the u.s military we had he'd had an incredibly successful career in the u.s military and because of that i feel i wouldn't be here had it not been for my dad doing that you know he comes from a poor background he came here from Samoa no money joined the U.S. military and is forever grateful to that and I am as well but under when I realized it really kind of like destroyed that that whole romantic idea mm. of the U.S. military you know for me and it's but it's something I'll always respect and always honor with my my dad because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. I know I wouldn't have the education I have had and the privilege to do what I do had it not been for that. And um, uh, so that's my background really. But I was really pretty much raised here, um, but on the military, really on the military base. And I feel like that experience really helped me even get to know other kinds, different kinds of people at a very young age you know, meeting different people coming in to the military base. You know, we stayed here, but a lot of my friends would move, you know, move around. Um, and that, I feel like that really contributed to, I think, just getting, just being comfortable around so many different types of people at a young age. And then, um, but yeah, that's basically my background. I've lived here almost my whole life, basically. And then the, the triangle, the symbolism of the triangle in our, um, our logo, so when I first thought about Lady Pacifica, the, the first name of, I guess, the magazine was Poly Girl, which is short for Polynesian Girl. And Polynesia, you know, we're known for the triangle, right? The, the, the triangle um, ideology. And so when I went to my graphics artist and I gave her, just kind of giving her my idea about what I wanted to do, and I didn't know, I had no symbols or no logos in mind at all. I just kind of gave her an idea and this is what she drew up for me initially was the triangle. There was, the patterns weren't in there, um, but the triangle was just that representation of Polynesia. <clears throat> and with the birds at the end of each um, corner of the triangle representing the tra the va, basically in Samoa, the traveling, um, you know, which is like the space between spaces, right? And so when I changed the name from Poly Girl to Lady Pacifica, to encompass all of Pacific, all of the Pacific, not just Polynesia. Um, I went back to my graphic artist and asked her, asked her, can you somehow incorporate Pacifica in this? I love the Polynesia, I love the triangle because I felt like it was so strong and clean and simple, but I wanted to somehow incorporate the rest of the Pacific in that idea. And so what she did was, I don't know if you can see, but in the triangle, there's the different motifs from the different parts of the Pacific. So there's Polynesia, Micronesia, and Melanesia incorporated in those symbols. And that's where that, the symbolism of the, tr the triangle came from. So we kept the tri triangle because I felt like it's such a strong image and it's really clean and simple, but the intricacy of the motifs in the triangle are supposed to represent the different Pacific, I guess when you divide them, the Micronesia, Polynesia, and Melanesia. Um, that, that's what's incorporated in the symbol. Miley, I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> that because 
I never thought to ask that question. And that is such a, I had never really looked at the triangle until now. Yeah. So that's really awesome. And I, and I like the name Lady Pacifica. Poly girl sounds like a young girl. Yes. And a lady <laughs> sounds like a lady. Yeah. <laughs> that's so intense. I, yeah, awesome. I was. I feel like Poly Girl was the college, the younger version of me when I first idealized this, and then yes. Lady Pacifica was the grown up. <laughs> yes, right. You've Eastern grown mindset. into a lady. Right. <laughs> the mindset has changed. The ideas have changed. The experiences that I had gone through before finding finding Lady Pacifica, she is the grown up version of. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hopefully, such, yeah. you know, your story is such a success story. I mean, because yeah. all of us, when, no matter how old we are, I mean, our WCC students are all ages, right? Some are 18, mm -hmm. some are 80. Okay, I don't know, 80, 60. <laughs> um, but we all have these dreams of, you know, doing mm -hmm. something that people will um, remember us for. And whether it be my dream of someday writing the story of my family and giving it to my children, um, or you know, something, we, we all want to leave a legacy and how mm -hmm. wonderful that you have this legacy um, of magazines. And, uh, and, and I guess the other thing is empowerment. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's my biggest um, push as an instructor is mm -hmm. I want to empower my students, whether that be through learning knowledge or whether that be giving them voice, um, yeah or opening their eyes to, you know, another subject in the college realm. I mean, there's so many ways we can empower people. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, Eva Lani, did you have any questions? If you're there. <laughs> oh, she does, in the chat. Yes. Is the digital version available in the other issues as well, or just the latest issue? Also, how can we, as students help to support the vision of Lady Pacifica publication, digital distribution, helping spread the word, and like you said earlier, sharing our stories. Perfect, Eva Lani. Thank you, Eva Lani. I do have, um, so I have a couple of issues, the first and second, excuse me, issues I do have available for digital download, and I'm that's what I'm working on now to upload to the, the web website so that everyone can get access to them. Um, but the third and fourth issue, I'm trying to get the files back from someone so that I could do that. So right now I'm in the, I'm in the midst of working on getting those digital files back so that I could make it available to everyone. Um, the, well, actually the third, right, the third and fourth issue. So the third issue was our first dual cover issue. It was honoring athletes and artists in the same issue because there's so many, I don't know why there's this divide between artists and athletes and they're not the same thing. And I'm like, athletes are artists in their own way. You know, they got to do certain things to finesse their bodies and their skills, but we put them in the same issue to honor them both. And then our fourth issue was that fashion issue uh, with Janique, um, Janique Sayuli from Australia, who is the director of Pacific Runway, which is a huge fashion show in the Pacific. Um, but I'm, I'm working on getting those files back so that I could get them online available for everyone to download for free. Um, but I am unfortunately sold out of all the other issues, the four issues before this issue, the printed versions are all sold out. So I'm trying to get those digital files for everyone. Yeah, I know. So we're trying to get, I'm trying to, I'm working on that now, but I do have the first two. So I'm going to get those up on the website, hopefully by the end of this year, but, but I will definitely share when I do. I was hoping that we could at WCC get actual hard copies of yeah. your magazines in the library. Um, yeah, we're working on it. We're working on trying to get a um, a reprint of the first four um, because you know in the beginning we didn't print as many because we weren't sure, and you have to well, put the money up for that. You know, yes. so it was out of your own pocket, so it's totally yeah. understandable but it would be great to be able to get them into the UH library system um, yeah. because I think it, it belongs there. I think that yeah. these are voices that need to right. belong there, um, yeah. just like a book. Um, mm -hmm. So I really like to push that um, because there yeah. are, I mean, there's very little money in the UH system right now, yeah. but uh, you know, there are little grants 
that people get and they're always asking me, what should we put in the library? And <laughs> I, I need to say that. So yeah. let me know as soon as that happens so that we can get those will, into the libraries. Yeah. yeah. We had someone reach out from UH as well, UH Mon oh, North side asking awesome. us for, um, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't, I didn't, it was, it's very overwhelming. Like, are you sure? <laughs> We're just a small little thing. Like, you know, yeah. among the amazing people in those, in that, you know, that area in the, in such a huge, like important area. And here we are like, mm. you know, but mm. uh, I'm working on it. No, I would definitely let you know. Yes. And as far as Ulani, sure. I will let everyone know, you know, all about. So if you sign up for our newsletter, that's another way that we try to communicate with our um, community is getting on our, our newsletter site. So we are going back to monthly newsletters because there's so much happening and um, it's just easier to get it out to our, the, the community through that newsletter. And, um, yeah. and I'm sorry, Ivalani, about your question about how can students support it? So support the vision of Lady Pacifica is really getting connected with us. There's so many ways you can email me, you can email us at hello at ladypacifica.com. Visit us on our website. There's a contact um, button you can hit and just write into us about any ideas you might have. Um, and talk story with us. Talk story with me and let me know what, your, what are your ideas for the, for the students out there that feel like they want to write, they want to edit, they want to, they have a story for, of someone else that they would like to publish. Please, please get in contact with me because you all are the future. And we, it would be an amazing thing to see the youth step up and really come in and take, take further control of that narrative that we have started, hopefully have planted the seed in a lot of our youth, just to own their voices and their stories and not be apologetic about wanting to sh share that. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome, anyone else? No? Okay. Um, well, taking control of the narrative, you have, I think, done that and that's why people like the UH system, like me, like all of us have come to you to now say, can I have a hard copy of that? <laughs> um, because you've captured these voices and they are valid voices, as you said, um, mm -hmm. many times, and um, they are worthy of being put into a place where we can physically touch them. Um, mm -hmm. You've made the different, you've made the distinction to yourself um, that the Glossy Magazine was very important to you. And yeah. the digital version won't have that same glossy magazine feel. So I think um, if there was a way that people could, is there a way to, for people to subscribe to the magazine? Not right now. We had it in the beginning, but right now I'm, it's really just on as, as the release. When it comes, it comes, yeah. yeah. Because okay. we, we, you know, like we thought we could do the four in the beginning and it was really difficult. Yeah. And so now, now that I, so, you know, as I'm, I'm learning, as I'm growing, we're only two years in, and I'm finding that, oh, I can do this instead of that. It's faster. Yeah. It saves money. I can get it out. And, you know, we, we stick to the authenticity of sharing these stories with our community at the least, you know, as, as not, I don't want to say as cheap, but we really as a, an affordable price as possible, um, you know, as far as having the physical printed magazine. But the digital, I'm like, we're always going to, we're, we're going to start. I made that decision this year to start getting that out there to everyone for free, you know, because in yeah. the past we were charging for it and I, I made the decision, no, that shouldn't be anymore, at least for the digital, because my mission was to get these stories out at no matter what. And that is my idea. That was the idea I had to, you know what, we're going to do it that way. And the physical yeah. printed magazine will be different, you know, but yeah. getting those digital stories out there at least, because you can, you know, once you download the file, you can attach it to an email and send it out to everyone, you know, and that is the point yeah, of why they, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it has a yeah. different reach, yeah. you know. And I mean, all magazines now pretty much have a digital option. So I think that mm -hmm. that's kind of the way the magazine is going, uh, magazine yeah. industry is going. So I'm glad yeah. that you made right. that decision because it can right. go further. And then we have students that um, also want to have a digital version, right? online classes. So I'm right. able to send out textbooks that way now because mm -hmm. we have to. There's no other yeah. option. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we're going to close. Um, if, if no one has any other questions, let's go ahead and thank Tolua with um, a hand. Um, I know we can't hear, but thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Tolua, for your talk today. I think it's inspiring. And I think that the more people that I can give it to, um, eventually all of these recordings will be available for people to view. And it's, it's inspirational. I mean, you, you're actually doing it. And um, that's really, really exciting. And I want to thank all of you for coming today, taking time out of your schedules to join us today and to share in our community engagement um, without lifting a finger. You just have to listen. You just have to listen. So thank you, thank you um, for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. It. Mahalo. Mahalo. Bye. Bye. Bye.